Hey and um, welcome back. So in this video I'm going to go back to data frames for a couple of reasons. The first one is related to the fact that data frames are the most important data type in R in particular and machine learning in general. And the second reason is because you have some confusion about the difference between a list and a matrix and a data frame. So let me show you what a data frame is with something that probably you're familiar on, and it's an Excel spreadsheet. If you're familiar with the spreadsheets, Excel in particular, you probably you're familiar with this sort of a structure. You have different sheets in the same file, and then you have different columns labeled with letters and different rows labeled with numbers. So basically, a data frame is one of these sheets. So this file, actually, if this would a uh, data frame in R, you would need a couple of data frames, OK? So if you understand Excel spreadsheet, you understand data frames. And that's all, basically. What's the difference with a matrix? A matrix is a collection of numbers. So it's a kind of particular case of data framing which everything is a, a real or an integer number. And what, what is a list? A list is a kind of object. So inside an object, you can put data frames. So you could understand actually this file in which you have a couple of uh, data frames, a couple of sheets, sorry, as a list with two data frames. So let's go back to our main message. A data frame is basically an Excel spreadsheet, okay? And let's play a little bit with this idea. So if we go back to R, I'm going to import uh, directly an Excel spreadsheet into a data frame, and I'm going to do that. So you have to install this library. I have already done that. So let's do that, stop the video, and go back. So if you do this, like when you go here, and this is one of the things that I love the most about our studio, is that you don't need to be an expert to, to enjoy our studio. So if you click here, and then you have this menu from Excel, and then we browse in the current directory, and I'm going to open this one. And this is beautiful, actually, because now you can see here that you have a menu, so you can choose between the two sheets in that Excel file. So remember, we have a couple of them. Okay, and now you can see those here. By default, it's going to import the first one. If I click, for instance, in the second one, which is simpler, you actually see that you have the same column. So state, state abbreviation, county, FIPS, party, whatever. Okay, so now you can import that file. So you can create a data frame. I'm going to rename this because this is too long. So I'm going to call this DF. That stands for data frame. And actually, you can see the real code here. So you could type this directly in your script and, and you would have the same effect, okay? And now, one thing that I love about this importation tool is that you can, for instance, skip some columns. So I'm going to skip this column. I'm going to skip the county one. I don't know what this is, so let's skip this. And also the candidate. Okay, and that's all. Uh, we have one, two, three. Let, let's skip this one too. Okay. So now click in import, and again, now our environment has this variable, which is called df, and remember that if you type view, the number of the data frame, you have this view in which you have all the columns that you have imported in this case, okay? So this is the first part, the, the first message of, of this video. Let me show you this from from the base R cheat sheet. So basically you have here all the things that you can do with data frames. One way to create a data frame is importing it as we have done today um, and in other videos. And the other is basically using this function data, data dot frame, in which you tell that you're going to have two columns. One is one to, th one to three and the other is ABC, okay? This is the result. And you have a quick summary here of wh what you can do with that. So stop the video and play a little bit with our data frame. So here we have three columns. So basically you have more options than here. And the interesting stuff is that you can access the element X just by typing DF dollar symbol X, okay? We have, we have also cover view and STR and also head shows you the first six rows and tail shows you the last six rows. Also you can, you can see the number of rows, the number of columns and the dimension. So let's play with this. Let's go back to R. So let's say DF dollar, and, and now you see that RStudio tells you what are your variables. So if you click in party and remember that we have this control return command in order to execute just that line, and you see the contents, okay? So 
let's see the dimension, dimension of the F, and you have three columns and 24,511 rows. You can also have the number of rows, uh, sorry, and row, and end call tells you the number of columns, okay? So this is pretty handy, and if you don't, you don't need to do this in every column, in every situation, but sometimes it's pretty useful because you need to to create a loop and you want to run from one to three, for instance, so you need to know the number of columns. And to finish this video, let me illustrate you how to combine different data frames. So let's create a new data frame called DF2, and this is going to be a fraction of the first one in which I'm going to take the first 10 rows and the first two columns, okay? Remember the syntax, we can actually see that strdf2, okay? And now, as you can see, we have only 10 times two, so we only have the state abbreviation and the party, okay? And we can combine them, so let's rbind them, df2 and df2, and if we do this, you can see that we have 20 rows and we have a copy of the same 10 times. So the first 10 comes from the first elements of df2 and then we bind, we paste together these two data frames. So this is a very simple way to combine different data frames. We can combine it by columns. So cbind, df2, df2. And as you can see here, we now have the same columns over and over again. So we only have the 10 rows, but now we have four columns. Okay, so this is a way in which you can you can increase, you can augment the, the data frame. Okay, another way in which you can do that, imagine that we can create a new variable. Let's call it, uh, I don't know, postal code. And this is going to take the values, I don't know, 1 to 10 to make it simple. Okay, remember that this is a vector. Uh, sorry. This is a vector. Con uh, I have to run this. So that contains the numbers 1 to 10. Okay, so let me show you what happens when you combine them. So let's cbind df2 with pc. And as you can see here, we have a new column. The name is automatically taken from the name of the variable, and we have this content. Another way to do this, we can take df2 and now create a new variable, and let's say new equals to pc. Okay, and now df2 has this new column, which is called new actually, and the contents of this new variable is one to 10. So as you can see, we have different ways in which we can manipulate data frames. And again, go to the to the base R cheat sheet and play around with these combinations. And that's all for today.